Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball. It's the All JM April edition. A huge, huge episode. Let's do it. Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball, brought to you by SeatGeek. My name is Jimmy. His name is Jake right Mm. there. Trevor's here and producer BBD behind the dish. It's a big, important episode. It's the first time we are voting Mm. a Silver Daisy potential winner. JM, all JM team. Jake, are you excited? Are you ready? I'm excited. I'm nervous. Uh, I love that we're highlighting a lot of guys that had massive months. Uh, April, I think, is the messiest. Uh, Most you know, important. Between, between games played. And, yeah, I mean, the pressure of, you know, some some of the best baseball players mm. in the galaxy, Trev, they will find out today they don't have a chance to get a daisy. And that's as much as I'm happy for the the pedal winners, I'm as devastated for those creatures. A lot of guys wondering if today is going to be their day. Trey Turner was trying to like plug his his uh, nomination to me last night. Um, I said, hey, bro, it doesn't work that way unless you slip me a hundo. And he didn't because he was on the baseball field. <laughs> uh, he did like my hoodie, though. I said, hey, shop.johnboymedia.com. Mm. You can get one for yourself. <laughs> Full <laughs> price, dog. <laughs> yeah. What do you think this is? <laughs> Running a bee's ass. We saw that coming. I'm excited. I love this episode because we do get to highlight some guys who, you know, we talk about the big names a lot. We try to highlight some of the other guys as much as possible. When we get when we get all the stats on the sheet in front of us, I think it's uh it's cool to see like who's really doing it. Yeah. Yep. And April is very tricky. Uh as you said, there's guys like there's a guy that might steal there's a guy that might be an April pedal winner two years mm-hmm. in a row that takes takes Ooh. away from takes away from like pro, silver from silver daisy potentials a lot of time in his maybe position maybe vice versa or, maybe he last runs year it. maybe he's it this year as, a, as right. a reminder last year paul goldschmidt kind of runaway mvp guy i don't think after april we had any conversations any month about him being the pedal winner hosmer snaked it from him in april wow so, oh, yes. the rest of the year doesn't get the daisy, even though the rest of the year it was like the easiest conversation. April's a tricky one. All right. So, like I said, episode is brought to you by uh, Seat Geek, mm. and they are sponsoring the uh, AL as we begin here as well. They've got the hookup for you. Use code TALKIN for $20 off your first purchase at Seat Geek. That's $20 off your first purchase with promo code TALKIN. Click the link in the description to download the app. Over 70,000 events every single day on Seat Geek, including sports, concerts, festivals, and more. It's simple. It's easy. Use Seat Geek promo code TALKIN. We have always had a lot of discrepancy and in, in trying to figure out and navigate the rules on this. Uh, Dalton, who uh, prepped the sheet for us, has also prepped a finite rules uh, tab here, which we are going to copy and paste and put in the description of the YouTube episode if you want to go check out uh, all the qualifications and the rules surrounding how you can win a pedal uh, in the JM all JM team. Because uh, there are some some interesting uh, things. And then Dalton also put guys in that he made sure they qualify. Mm. So we're not going to have to do our own, you know, scrummaging the stats and doing math about percentage anymore. This should be a little cleaner than uh, past years. And, and, but, and, of course, subject to change if we find something weird and think a rule should be adjusted. That's Dalton right. Dalton and I will, why it's will discuss. Team. That's yeah. why it's and, our team, And baby. maybe adjust the official rule moving forward. Yep, so... Uh, so, and if you've heard us use the term pedal and silver daisy and you have no idea what that is because it's your first year tuning in, if you win every, uh, every month, and it's not like May will be its own month, it'll be April plus May, it's to sign out who had the most complete year, uh, you, get, uh, you get a pedal per month. If you run the gamut on your position, you get a silver daisy, which is... And there's been, what, three silver daisies in, ever in existence, I believe? Vladdy got one. Vladdy got one. one. Trout got one last year. Trout had it last year. Uh, Otani was the DH in 2021. Vladdy was the first baseman in 2021. I think they were the only two that year. And then uh, Trout last year. It's hard. It's a good crew. Uh, Jordan 
Your Don had it, but he had a split. One month he was in the outfield. The rest of the way, I, I believe he was. The oh, Jedi that was a tough one. Yeah. Yeah, but, but it you, did have six pedals, but it didn't. It's not one necklace. It's like it's a, like a friendship necklace that like he has to piece it together. Daisy and a daffodil. Yeah. Still, still really cool. Yeah. All right. So position qualification: forty percent of the player's appearances have to come at this position for him to be qualified for it. There is a utility role for players. Um, that what's the uh where is it uh that player at least three positions dh does not count towards util and uh a player may be nominated for more than one spot however one player wins one spot besides otani who can win it at dh and at starting pitcher. Me- meaning like in the Jordan example he he wasn't going to win outfield mm-hmm. and dh we had to pick yeah. one yeah yeah all right, let's just get into it. As the rules come up, we'll just uh, clarify the reasonings as we go. We will start in the AL at the catcher position, which, Trev, you leaked, Jake and I. You have a runaway choice here? I don't have a runaway choice, especially as you start to like, kind of look at some of my favorite numbers uh, here. Uh, one thing that I like to look at as far as hitters is walk to strikeout ratio. And I see that our guy Adley Rushman has 22 walks to 17 strikeouts. And that just tickles my fancy a little bit. Now, if you're looking at a list, we have four guys here, Heim, Salvador Perez, Cal Raleigh, and Adley Rushman. If you look at like kind of, you know, the big important numbers, OPS, um, even, you know, homers, uh, RBI, Jonah Heim has it unless it bats. So he's kind of doing quality work with less at bats. 76 at bats to Adley's 103. I think Adley's the closest to him, but if we are giving our picks right away, I think Jonah kind of just runs away with it right now. 978 OPS from a catcher. Uh, that's going to get it done for me, guys. So I'll give him my April uh, pedal, Jonah Heim. It's not a conversation. Uh, the... Salvi and Cal Raleigh were listed on our sheet. You know, nice, nice months. Um, Adley was the only guy, and I kind of came in gung-ho. I've been the, the biggest Adley fan. I'm, I think he's going to get MVP votes this year. I think the Orioles have, have surprised me from who I thought they were going to be, and I thought Adley was basically a lock. Jonah Heim has been better uh, just having to watch him play, and, like, it's not, you know, you can't put up these stats and look fluky. Um, He's he's nasty and he's uh he's an April Daisy legend I think. Yeah. He 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 leads in batting average at least uh, amongst these four top contenders he leads in batting average and uh slugging and OPS. Who's got him in uh on base? Adley. It's Adley. Adley. Adley's got uh, But crazy what I loss. what I like about Heim is uh he he hits uh both uh pitchers. So he has fantastic numbers against uh lefties I believe. Uh, 1.2 OPS, but he also has an 8.83 versus righties. So catchers don't play a lot, and it would hurt if your catcher was also platoon because you want to platoon them more day-night, not versus what pitcher. So, yeah, he's easy, uh, clean sweep, the catcher position. And he's the one who stole it last year also. I believe, he got, I believe he got an April Daisy La- or Petal last year. It was so high- last year, it was, he was a little short on playing time for April. He had weirdly only played like 11 games. So we wanted to vote for him really badly because his numbers were better. But Murphy had played like 20 okay. games to his 11. Uh, okay. But Heim snuck in there in May again because he mm. just repeated it. Okay, so good. it's his second So he pedal. does have a, de- a pedal. He's good. Nice. He's awesome. All right, let's go to another position, Jake. Is this a conversation for you? Uh, American League first baseman, the four contenders here, Yandy Diaz. 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 Uh, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., Vinny Pasquantino, and Anthony Rizzo. A lot of Vs, uh, Zs, and Ys in this uh, quadruple. Jim, this is a player away from being a fantastic conversation. If we had to split the hairs between Pasquatch, Vladito, and Tony Riz, this would be a disaster. Uh, but Yandy Diaz exists. And uh, the on-base percentage, he's always been there. But now he's doing he's slugging, too. And those biceps have always been slugging. But the stats on the field haven't. Um, that Yeah, man, the weighted run created plus 185. I... Uh, I think it's a runaway, and he and a couple other guys we're talking about are a reason the Rays had an undefeated April, first in MLB history. 
I usually don't like to have like team um, performance in these individual awards because you know what can you do one. as one player? Oh, you do. Okay, that's one. interesting. Later in this, uh, but I think like you know the Rays going undefeated in April might mean something. No, Yandy's Yandy's been incredible this year. You, yeah, like you mentioned, Jake, he always has the on base percentage, but we're hitting some homers. Everyone on the Rays is hitting homers. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, again, these three candidates you just talked. To, oh, the three guys that I'm looking at right now: Yandy, Vlad, and Vinny. 15 to 16 strikeouts, 15 walks to 16 strikeouts for Yandi, 13 walks to 14 strikeouts for Vlad, and 15 walks to 16 strikeouts for Vinny. That's like not your grandpa's first baseman, mm -hmm. bro. I like the plate discipline from all of them, but I I, I think that uh, Yandi has separated himself a little bit here. So I'll give uh, Yandi my April pedal as well. Yeah, the on-base percentage being so high is is amazing because he's batting leadoff for the Rays. He did it uh, half the season last year. He batted leadoff, but he's I think almost every game or every game he's played has been from the leadoff spot, and the slugging to come from that spot as well is pretty crazy. So, yeah, another clean sweep. There are some interesting ones in the AL, but it started out the first two. I was like, well, not much going uh, on It's here. like a little crescendo. I like yeah. it. And just a shout-out, mm. obviously, bias to Vinny Pasquantino. Career 50 walks, 50 strikeouts. Insane. Love that. Insane. What's I going on with that? Is that like a thing this year? Or like are we walking more people this year? Are pitchers tired from the pitch clock? <laughs> Rush. So you, you don't you don't, don't see that this often. The pitcher so early. Oh yeah, we'll get there. But Jim, these second basemen have been attacking pitchers all year. Yeah, this was the first group where I went and dug like deeper into things I liked or didn't like about them. You have uh, Dubon, who just made some headlines with his quotes about the Giants. Comes off like yes. a, a jerk. My opinion. Hell of a hitting streak. Uh, B low Maybe for he's the Rays. Tapping into that. Lau. Yeah, B Lau for the Rays. Uh, Simeon for the Rangers. Glaber Torres for the Yankees are the top four on the list here. Um, I think we're just shoehorning four every time because I don't, there's, th there's three that kind of. Yeah, we want at of. least four on the sheet. Sometimes there'll be more per month if, if more guys deserve it, but. I have a I have a choice here. I don't know if it's your guys' choice. Uh, do you want me to go first? Yeah. I I am taking uh, Simeon. Now I don't think he leads in every stat. Uh, Dubon has a higher batting average, and um, uh, Lau has a higher OPS. But Lau doesn't uh, face lefties, and I I that that hurts you for me if your team doesn't. You don't face, you just take those days off. You don't face the other side of the mound. I don't, I think Simeon, who has played every single game in April from the leadoff spot, hits both sides, is I'd rather have that guy than the guy you have to platoon for. Simeon, I think defense, yeah, I think defensively, uh, Simeon's been a little bit better than both of these or the rest of the candidates here. Uh, he does lead in some of the counting stats as well, uh, James. As you mentioned, he has played all the games. He leads in runs scored. He leads in he leads in RBIs. Um, he's such a solid player, man. And so there's a lot of these guys are uh, when we get down to it. My decision was between B. Lau and, and Simeon, uh, but I think as far as overall play in April, I will also agree with you and go with Marcus Simeon for my April pedal. Sweet, uh, Simeon. You know, this this isn't my where the team influenced me at all because obviously Rays and Rangers had very nice months, not as good as the undefeated Rays. But uh, Simeon, man, on both sides of the ball, the tone he sets for that team, the four stolen bases also can't be ruled out uh, in this equation. And, uh, yeah, I mean, every almost every counting stat, Simeon, or Lau has two more homers, but like you said, Jim, uh, with some of the platoon stuff, um, I, I think Simeon all around um, – Great April, great second baseman. Yeah, and I, I wonder with if he's just getting raised, Lau. Um, like his numbers last year, uh, or this year when he has faced lefties in the pen, they're not bad. So I'm not rooting against him. I'm rooting for the Rays to give him some chances. And if he continues to do it, then it would not be much fault. harder for me. But yeah, I, got a hit from both sides. Can't be a guy getting subbed out. He also strikes out like almost twice as much as Simeon if you yeah if you want another tiebreaker yeah cool all right wow I thought there might be uh, not a clean sweep there now it gets ugly shortstop position we have in front of us Bichette 
Wander Franco, Jorge Mateo, and Jeremy oh. Pena. This is ugly for you, Jake? Yes, uh, because as everyone knows, and I, I preseason bet, uh, Bo Bichette has led <laughs> the AL in hits the past two years. He's currently leading the AL in hits again. Um, all he does is hit. Wander Franco has been a huge part of the Rays' undefeated April, where he has six stolen bases. Um, he has five homers, um, a 909 OPS, which is higher than Bichette. He plays really good defense. Um, Jorge Mateo from your Baltimore Orioles, uh, the Baltimore Birds. He is five games less uh, than Wander Franco. Uh, he has one more home run. He has more runs. Um, he has 10 stolen bases. He's one of the fastest players in the league. He's not a guy that's supposed to leave April with a 1.0 OPS and a 667 slugging. So this is where... All of us have our different how many games do you have metric. All of us have where do the stats actually land. Um, and I think easily you could pick either one of those three and have a good argument. Pena's on the list. I, I think he's a tier below. Uh, like Jimmy said, we have four guys uh, at each level. Um, I think you can make a compelling for all three. Dalton guessed my pick on the way in. He thought this was one of the hardest ones. He guessed my third pick. Wow. Trev, tough for you? Uh, not really. I, too, also Ooh. very much enjoy watching Bo Bichette play. Uh, he's had a couple, like, five-hit nights back-to-back -back or something like that. But Jorge Mateo, I think, uh, to me, is right now playing better all-around baseball. You mentioned what he does on the base pass. Uh, he's an excellent defender as well. Um, he's, had he's like, pushed, you know, one of their top prospects off a of shortstop, man. Like, this guy has locked down that position in Baltimore. He is a big reason why... Uh, Baltimore has is off to uh, a really great start in April. And, you know, if you kind of just like look around the numbers, he's still one dotting it, man, at the shortstop position. So when it is close in some of those bigger numbers like OPS and 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 some of the counting stats, I always try to like lean base running and defense to round it out. And I think he's separated himself in those categories. So I'll take Jorge Mateo, uh, even though, man, like you said, Wander and Bo had some really nice numbers in April. But Mateo gets my vote. Do you have a different, or are you, uh, you also Mateo? I'm Jorge Mateo. Same. I, I thought this was easy. I didn't even think this was hard. Yeah. The only thing, I mean, Wander has uh, how many more games? Six more games? I just clicked off the sheet. Um, he has five more games, which is, you know, over almost 40 at-bats, which is significant, especially when we're talking April sample size. And... I do want to throw in my Eddie Rosario theory, as I label it. Jorge Mateo Ooh. has done it all from the second half of the lineup. Wander has been up top. Like, when the game starts, Wander Franco's there. You know he's going to be there, and the other team is game planning to beat him. For half of this month, Jorge Mateo has been a bonus piece at the bottom part of the lineup. Now, how much should that hurt him? I don't think as much as the gap has landed in April. Yeah, if the slash lines were closer in any way, I would go to that stuff to find a tiebreaker, but I didn't even think there was worthy of deeping it, uh, digging in. He, he leads in every slash line, leads in F4, and leads in uh, weighted runs created plus. So I, Mateo gets it. He's almost at a 400 OBP. I mean, all right, baby. Way to go. If I see a four with your OBP, I'm going to like you. Yeah. Even if it's just a month, man. That's like Especially from the bottom of the lineup, man. Turn it over. All right. We're like cruising through this and we've agreed on every single one so far. The AL is, yeah, it's, uh, it's going to, I think we're going to even out on that. A little eventually. surprised on Wander. I, I think we, I do think we landed in the right spot, but I'm you know, telling you, you get these numbers in front of you. Like, He's yeah, got double opening. the doubles. <laughs> Teo just runs, man. He's so fast. Third base. Stolen bases. Trev, we got your guy, Matt Chapman. Devers is always here. Jose Ramirez is always here. Josh Young uh, in the top four. This has been the Devers J Ram debate for two years in a row now. Uh, it's never been anyone else besides those two. At about least not be. as a winner. About to be. Yep. Yeah, and uh, this one's this one's easy for I think everyone is in on agreement on this one. He he had I think he was the April player of the month too, I'm pretty sure. Or he's gonna be. I know he won player of the week uh, at least once. 
Uh, Matt Chapman's running away with this thing, guys. Yep. He's got a contract one- year. Taste your boy, Trev. Contract year for him. He's leading in extra base hits. He's got 20. The next closest is Rafael Devers with 17. Uh, and, you know, Devers had a really solid month as well. 10 homers and uh, 27 uh, RBI. Matt Chapman has just been, he's hit constantly throughout April. Um, playing great defense. Uh, his F4 is, I think, maybe tops in the league right now. Is it sitting at two? Um, 219 weighted runs created plus. He's doing it all right now. And um, if he continues this, my goodness, he's going to get paid this offseason. Leads the league in total bases. He, he started from the get-go and hasn't stopped. Can I tell you guys something? Yeah. Thank God we don't have to pick between Devers and J-Ram again because yeah. their stats are yeah, they're always, always very close. just toe-to-toe. Uh, Matt Chapman, helped, <laughs> he helped his own case uh, a ton in his last seven games of April where he batted uh, – 458 with a 552 on base. Um, zero home runs, uh, six doubles, four RBIs, but I mean, just hits, hits, hits. So he finished strong. That's how you're going to get yourself a pedal. He made it easy. Maybe if he doesn't have that strong of a finish, he's, it's a three way race, and we're really, he made it easy for us. So I thank him for that. And a little love to our thick neck king, uh, Josh Young, who uh, he has. The highest after Chapman, he's got the highest slugging, and he's oh. he's been looking the part and so thick at third. Holy smokes, so Trev! Thick. You want to hear Chapman's splits? He's got thirty plate appearances against left-handed pitchers. I gotta imagine he's crushing the ball. Five thirty-six batting average. <laughs> One dot four OPS. Don't. Is that good? Five thirty six batting average versus lefties. What's the what's the uh, right handed? Like, give me the OPS of the right versus right handers. I don't have nine eight enemy. nine versus righties. Yeah. One dot four versus lefties. Yeah. Platoon guy. Three twelve or three seventeen batting average versus righties. So Matt Chapman, what a month! A daisy, it is yours. Four sixty five OBP. Let's let's go to. My brain would go to util next, but you, the way that we're structured, where we go to outfield. What do you guys want to do? Just Let's go, go to outfield. We're we're banging right. down the sheet, and maybe we even tell people right now about shady rays because I have my glasses right here. I have so many shady rays. I don't have a drawer full of them. I uh, it's a shady ray, shady rays life. Um, you guys know yeah. shady rays by now. They've been with us for a while, and if you've been watching our blitzball battle. Uh, it's a shady rays festival. So we love shady rays, and what you need to do is summer here. No. But it's kind of. It's about to be. Hurry up. And you need sunglasses. So go to Shady Rays, and you know they've got the best deal in town. Code Talking, 50% off two-plus pairs of polarized sunglasses. So get yourself a pair. Get yourself and a friend or that's a like, lover That's a like pair. BOGO, but better. It's like a BOGO. But better. Yes. It's been a big Rays month, so why don't you get yourself some Shady Rays Code talk and the rays are shady too. Whoa. Whoa. This works out perfectly. Trev, no so calling okay. them the You're shady the Mariners rays. reek. I'm the Rays reek. So okay. that's all right. So, I've been inside. I've been inside the Rays. They're so shady. Th- this 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 outfield and DH situation is is really uh pliable or like you you can pliable? Yeah, you can rotate, you can be very flexible within our rules around here. The, Interesting. The, that's because the rules you need to have our one center fielder and not a lot of guys qualify as center fielders because it's a very hard position defensively to play. Then just two outfielders. So if the two best outfielders are both center fielders, you can use both of them. He just be an outfield slot and then the DH, but there's just so much moving around. Mm. Uh, just to give you an example of like the massaging Brent Rooker, mm. you can have him win DH and then have three outfielders. Or you can have Brent Rooker count as an outfielder, and that leaves DH for Jordan. Or uh, Jordan wins out. And or and then you have this guy at center field, but whatever. There's a lot going on. I don't know in what order you want to do it. Because who you put I, at center field changes how you do the rest. I think that's why yes. we have to do center field first. I think uh, that, yeah, yes. that dictates fielder. the rest. Can I ask you, Brent Rooker has qualified at DH? Yeah. We, I have four faith Dalton. in Dalton. Yes. Okay. I do I do too. When he and I were going over what the rules should be 
he Brent Rucker was the example I looked at with yeah he plays a lot of DH. Just type Dalton into Baseball Reference. So and oh, there's a couple guys. He plays more DH than any position than any other position. Brent. Okay, good, good. We want our DHs to play DH. Where are you, you going in center, center field? field? I I mean I'll I'll tee it off because I I like you're saying the puzzle piece goes I think it's Trout. Um, the, uh, it's always trout. It's fucking. It's always kind of trout, always dude. trout, right? Um, and I, I think you know, Big Aaron Judge was kind of the other center fielder that was leaking out, and um, pretty much all of Trout's numbers across the board are better. Yeah. So, but if Judge is a top, Judge isn't going to get in the top three outfield spots unless he wins the center field spot, and Trout goes to another outfield spot. So that's the trickiness here. Like, if you think Judge is a top three outfielder, he, he has to be in that center field spot, and you put Trout elsewhere. Well, a center fielder can still land in the other outfield spots, right? Well, yes. Trout would be the center field spot. Right, so if Judge was good enough, he would just be another outfield spot. Yes, yes. Center field is the most transitive. But he's not. In my opinion, I think the only he's way not gonna, eligible. Yeah. For I think the only field, way Judge gets a date, if, 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 yeah, list. if he's not eligible for center field, he doesn't make the list. So if you want try, Judge as a top three, he, you know, if we want to be Yankee homers, you, I would say, well, I'll give him. Center yeah, field I don't, he, he didn't I, earn it this I, month. I agree. Future, I don't. I don't have. I don't have him there. But there's ways you can mess with it like that. A little bit. So Trout at center field. You just you got you lock in the best center fielder, and then you find. To the two best outfielders. All right, I no massaging allowed. I agree with that. So So Trout wins center field. Little deep cut. Congratulations. Little deep cut for the talking baseball. I mean, if if you care about uh, multiple season streaks, which I don't, you would be interested because Trout. I don't know at the end of twenty twenty one if he got a pedal, but he got every center field pedal last year. He did are not you, get the pedal in 21. I'm, I, are you alluding to that he could be on a run for a double daisy? I, I care Holy about double shnikes. daisies. I care about double daisies. I don't care about like hitting streaks over two seasons. 2021, his only pedal was April. He got hurt. Mid. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Didn't didn't his April month carry him over into May? <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Uh, it didn't. He would have. He would have in it. the conversation yeah, we, for sure. We knew he was broken. So Injuries are tough. We have our own rules. Um, Trevor Plouf. This is where things get interesting in the AL. Do you want to throw out maybe your next outfielder, and we see if there's any alignment on that, or if we just think you're. The, this is where I'm having difficulties <laughs> because Brent, Brent Rooker, uh, like deserves Rooker's a, a nightmare. Pedal. He deserves a pedal, and I just don't know where to put him. If you could put him at DH, I, I mean, he's better. He has the best numbers of any of the guys we have listed here. And so we have an opportunity to put him in one of the outfield positions or give him the DH, and that's kind of where I'm like, oh, shoot. Well, that conversation, we to me, comes it. down to, is he better than Otani? Because Otani yes. is the o- Otani's only way to get a pedal is at DH. And starting pitch. Yeah, but offensively is DH. So to me, uh, who who's better? Yeah, he's he's been better than Otani as okay. a hitter this so year. So then yes. then my brain goes, but the third outfielder potential. So say rookie gets Rooker gets the DH spot. There's two outfield spots. Are those two guys more deserving than a pedal of a pedal than Otani? Yes, as a hitter, I think so. Because then Otani is out. So that, but but if they weren't, then I would give Rooker the outfield spot, Otani the DH. That's how I would do it, at least, to get the top most deserving guys in. I get what you're saying. I, yeah, I, I, I get that. I think if if we're doing Rooker, which he's earned it, the numbers are he's tough, played the tough most games at DH, right? Uh, yeah, it came up like with 50, more games at DH. He's, he for himself, he's played more games at DH than any other spot. Let's just do that. He deserves a pedal. Let's give it in the DH. We can shuffle that later if it, if we feel like we need it. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. DH I'm that. fine with that. I was down to him or Otani for DH. I think Otani did beat out Buxton or Alvarez, IMO. Um, Harold Ramirez also gets some love. But Rooker has been incredible, and I think the outfielders have been better than what Otani would be, so I have Rooker as my DH. I'm, I'm good with that. I, I do think you, it lands that way. I'm just slide saying, it later, we can. Yeah, you can slide around if Otani deserves it. But there's two outfielders that have 
better numbers. If Rooker's the DH, there's two outfield spots open. That's how it works. Yeah. Sorry, Otani. Maybe three. No. I mean, so then there's some fun names here. Names that I don't know if they're going to go on to, you know, be in contention for get more pedals daisies. There. But who you got, Jim? Well, the next highest slugging percentage goes to Kelnick, right? Um, no. Well, yes. No, yeah. Randy. No. Kalnick has a 615. Randy's 573. Oh, I want my outfielders guy to highlighted. Especially if we're not doing center field. We're doing just corner outfielders. I I mean, that that's a, an important slash line for corner outfield position to me. Like, So I'm I'm giving it to Kalnick, one of my spots for sure. Also had Kalnick. He's, he's been incredible. His walk percentage ain't great. Would Trev. like that to get better. Trev slash Reek, you're not in on Kelnick? It's not that I'm not in on Kelnick. I just had my next guy up, and it wasn't Kelnick. Would Kelnick be so, your next, next guy up? Um, he's close. He's close. I, I definitely want to reward him for perseverance. I think, you know, I, I take that into oh. my account for my award because, man, that guy – has been brutal to start his career. I mean, that's not, I mean, that's, I'm not trying to come at him because you know how I am with Mariners fans. He has been brutal. He still has a negative career baseball reference war, even though he's got off to this nice start. Um, my next, my guy that I have, and I, and you guys have voted him in already. It's two, it's two votes to the three. So, so we'll let you, we'll, we'll let you lead off the next guy. Okay. So snaps to Kalnick for getting a, First Daisy, Huge. I'm, I'm assuming. Yeah, Incredible. first pedal, excuse me. You want to hype him up more? Like, Put perseverance in the rules, BBD. He, he played so well that he he they slot him up to the three-hole uh, recently. He was in the six for a majority of the season. They actually started him seventh, uh, moved up. He's playing both outfield spots. If the team was off to a better start, we would be talking about how he changes their season outlook. It would like be the story of baseball. Like, but if you told us coming into the season, Kelnick was going to be a you know, a one and a half war usable outfield. We'd yep. say, okay, nice step. Instead, he's been one of the best in baseball. Also, uh, hitting lefties and righties both at a uh, great, wow. great pace. They so. never, he never used, they never used to let him do that. Yeah. Well, he didn't earn it, and now right. he's made some swing adjustments. He's put in time. Um, I believe he did do like the drive line thing, and mm. you know, he he put the work in, and it's and it's and it's panned out. And I love guys that are. Willing to make adjustments. And for him, I was like, he had to make adjustments. And he went and did it. So I, I I do like that. So, yes. I mean, snaps for him. I will lead off our third and final uh, outfield position. I'm going our guy. The best to ever do it. Randy Rosarena, man. I think that he's just impacted the game so much. I have a little bit of WBC bias watching him do his thing. But you get into, you know, the NLB season. And he's continued it. And he's leading in B war. I think he's only behind Trout and Rooker uh, for F war um, in this outfield position. He he just plays the game like with so much passion. And uh, again, he's a big part of the reason why the Rays went undefeated in April. So he's my vote for the third and final pedal winner in the outfield. I'm with you. He he started every single game besides one. Uh... A Sunday in Toronto. They gave him the day off. Otherwise, he's been there mostly in the three-hole for the team. Um, 20 out of the 28 games in the three-hole. And, yeah, I mean, he's it's hot. That's the outfield I had. I, I had Trout, Randy, and Kelnick. Um, I, I had Rooker and Otani as slightly more of a debate uh, for DH. Again, mostly games played because what Rooker's done. But like you're saying, I mean, even... Even in that sample, he's outperformed Otani in a lot of the counting stats. So I know, you know, Rooker Otani on paper coming into the year, <laughs> uh, a featherweight versus a heavyweight, but uh, Rooker's, Rooker's earned it, man. I'd like to see Randy have more triples, only one. Come on. It's fair. It's not enough. It's fair. Damn. He's got four games at DH and absolutely went crazy. Uh, Adelise Garcia deserves yeah. a shout out. He did have, I think, eight ribbies in one game. So that kind of wow. elevated those numbers. 
uh, I think three homers and eight ribbies, right? Don't have That's, such a big a, game, Adelise. That was a nice game. I'm I'm using that against you for some reason right <laughs> yeah, now. Trev, I don't know I mean, why. I mean, a twenty but... a twenty fifteen Trevor Plouffe <laughs> would punch you in the face right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just looking at these and I was like, damn, like you know, he's he's got some counting stats, and I remember that one big game. Um, no, there's some other guys that need to be mentioned here. I mean, Doogie. Kyle Tucker, that dab Abraham Lincoln MFer, he's off to a good start Always. again. Always, uh, your Don. Yeah. Shocker. Not involved in the outfield or DH conversation necessarily for April. And he's a guy that we, if you yeah, had to pick one Daisy guy last year, yeah, to like be in contention for a Daisy, it'd be your Don for me, him and Trout. And uh, sorry, your Don, this year is not your year, unfortunately. April's that is tough. Tall. He did a great job. But... I mean,. I'm looking into Randy a little bit, trying to find some fun fun stats. Runner on third, two outs. Mm. He's had three opportunities. He's got four RBIs. Yes. Just that's the best to ever. Just the best to a, ever play the sport. That's quite the stat right there, James. He's just in the clutch moment, like he's going to push that run across. You have... That's, nice, that's what he called out, the backbreaker stat? Yeah. He's pissed the pitcher off. Now I'm looking at runner on, he's got nine plate appearances, runner on third, less than two outs. And I think uh, he's come through a ton. He's pushed the run across. Where is it? He pushed the run, runner on third, less than two outs. Seven RBIs, nine chances. So you want to have an undefeated April, kids? Randy's doing the damn thing. Holy smokes. Alex Verdugo, uh, clutch gene as well. He's had a couple walk-offs. He's kept the Red Sox rolling. I know you guys don't want to hear that. Kept you guys in last place. But, hey, got to mention him. What talking about? I, we love Verdugo. All right. We got oh, we got the whole uh, pitching and NL to do. Well, we you got you too. Oh, you too. And this one's kind of easy. I think we're all going to be on the same page here. The numbers are kind of glaring. Three, two, one. Taylor Walls. Taylor motherfucking Walls. Abstain. <laughs> Taylor Walls. That's two. Taylor Walls, sure. We yeah. have four Drew guys listed here. Too. It's Drury, Kike Hernandez, Whit Merrifield, and Taylor Walls. And Taylor Walls by far has the best numbers. Everybody on the That's race nice has number. good numbers. My daisy winners are good enough to own a position. <laughs> oh, you're just out on the util position. Oh, it's happened, yeah. Yeah, okay, good. Well, me and Jake agree. So, Taylor Walls, Jackson congratulations. Jake. I believe your first pedal. A lot of first-time pedal he winners. is a pest. And he's hitting. Yeah. He's I mean, for him to be hitting is gross. Be a glove only, for Christ's sake. He also has five stolen bases. Just throwing it in there. Something going on in those walls. Who's your pitcher, Jimbo? If you abstain from Util, who you got throwing the pill? Rhymes. Well, How are we doing? One starter? We always do. We just do one starter. Probably not fair, but that's the way we've done it. Garrett Cole. Um, Garrett Cole's my choice, and I dug into some data here, thinking uh, Trev would go Sonny because that's kind of the two mm. ways he's a Twins guy and we're Yankees guys. Uh, Jay, uh, Trev, are you going Sonny? You're going Cole. Uh, I wasn't sold on either of those guys necessarily. I think there's another guy that's deserved of some mentioning here. Maybe the F war and the B war don't represent that, but the opponent's batting average sure does. Leading in whip sure does. Mm. Uh, leading in strikeout sure does. I mean, Shohei's been incredible as a pitcher this year. Shit, I didn't even deep dive into him. You're not. It's, I mean, this is this is this is a tough one. It really is because the, those three guys. I think. I mean, we have also have Luis Castillo uh, on our sheet, and he's fucking been lights out as well. Um, but Shohei, like. I mean, limiting people to a freaking 102 opponent's average. That's crazy, dude. Like, hey, simple math here. One out of every 10 people that come to play get a hit off you. That's crazy. Yeah. He this, is, this is a tough one for me. It's not a runaway for Cole. I know that he has, he also um, has a lot more walks than the other guys. So, yes, yes. That's where that's where his, uh, but he still leads, he still leads in whip. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, yeah, okay, it's not bad. I might allow walks, but I don't allow anybody to get a hit off me. 
I looked at opponents a lot. I can pull it up with. Um, mm. I can pull it up with Shohei. Uh, Sonny Gray, ha- five out of the six teams he's faced are uh, bottom 10 teams in OPS. Uh, Garrett Cole, five out of the six teams he's faced are top 15 uh, in OPS uh, plus. So Cole has faced five out of his six games were above average offenses. Uh, Sonny Gray has faced the 30th ranked team twice in Kansas City, the 20th, the 25th, and the 23rd, uh, Cole faced the 2nd, 9th, 7th, 13th, 15th. Uh, I'm going to believe Shohei has probably not faced a lot of talent either because of the division and all that shit. So he's also faced Oakland. They are bottom 10. They got to be right. Yeah. Uh, Kansas City's the worst team. They've faced Oakland twice. Kansas City once. The Nationals, they're bottom six. Uh, Red Sox are good, and that's all. Let's just say our pick on three. One, two, three. Call. Cole. Sunny Gray. Nice. Nice, Trev. And make sure you, you check me out. Cole. Make sure you check me out on the pregame show. Jim, that was a I knew you guys were going Cole. I, I, didn't, I didn't have a pick locked in. I kind of wanted to hear something. You were that's compelled it. by my argument? Yeah. No. Yeah. The opponent's, it was a, face, the opponent's face is pretty important. It was and pretty eye-opening when I looked at Sonny's, and I was like, oh, my God. Twenty twenty. Sonny does have the best FIP of all of them, which is very important to pitchers. It is very uh, so close to Coles. To me. It's like point, like a point oh three, point oh three away. Yes. Yeah. All right. These guys are all, all had great April. So. I'm not knocking any of them. I, I think yeah. that Sonny and Otani can beat the best offenses. I'm not trying to say they can't. I'm just saying, in April, when you judge what they've done against who they've done it, I think Coles is more impressive. Schedule's not their fault. Especially what yeah. happened. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's move on. Are we moving on? We don't do believers, right? <clears throat> no. Thank goodness. Yeah. Oh, no. Crap shoot anyway. National League is brought to you by HelloFresh. Mm. If you're a young, dumb boy or girl that has no cooking experience and you want to be able to take mm. care of yourself, <coughs> HelloFresh Meal service is perfect because they're going to give you the food, the exact ingredients you need, so you don't need to overshop. That's a big hassle when you're young. Mm. You're like, I don't need this much fucking parsley. I'm going to use one twig, <laughs> and then I'm just going to have gross, stale parsley in my fridge for a while. They give you just the <laughs> amount you need to cook, and then they give you visual and written instructions on like the, the cutting and the boiling and the time and the mixing process. So not only are you getting food, or pretty affordable and nice uh, uh, thing. You're also getting the thought process of what should I eat? Do I want this? What am I craving? Out of your life. Mm. And you're being taught the basic skills of cooking, which uh, actually helped me teach me how to cook. And then I decided like, oh, I'm, I can do this and I do that. I did HelloFresh for a while when Caitlin was pregnant with James. So go to HelloFresh.com slash Talkin16 and use code Talkin16. Why 16? For 16 free meals plus shipping. HelloFresh.com slash Talkin16. Start using America's number one meal kit today. Today. I'll be honest. Last night, the AO was filled out. I had a lot. I had a fun going through it. Uh, I, I haven't like fully dove in deep into a lot of the NL picks. So I don't know if you guys uh, have or can lead the way, but I'll, I'll tee up there, the there, first one. Yeah. Yeah. There's, I feel like the first, you know, three or four sections here, they're going to go down. There's some clear cut winners. I um, dug into. The first one, actually. I forgot I did this. I have notes. So I, forget. I don't know when I did that. Okay. Uh, catcher for NL. You got Jan Gomes on the sheet, Sean Murphy on the sheet, JT Romuto on the sheet. Uh, you guys have a, a... You think this is a debate or you think this is easy? Sweep, no? Yeah, I think it's going to be a sweep. Although I love you, JT. You're such a uh, good-looking dude. I had my arm around you yesterday. You love our content. You said that. It's a quote. Uh, I think Sean Murphy uh, runs away with this. Yeah, I have Murphy. It was a cheat code this month, man. Um, Man, the walks, like you said, Trev, those jumped off the sheet. Um, Jan Gomes' walk percentage is... uh, (laughs) Can't really peddle that. Good for Jan making the sheet, man. Yeah. I'm I'm all about that, but Sean Murphy, um, yeah, Braves, Braves going Braves. He's catching and batting cleanup, playing every game. Will Smith is... Yeah, Will Smith is going to get docked for not playing enough. You know, he I think he was on the IL. I think he just came off last night. Um, 
So he had some really good numbers, uh, and I, I assume he'll be in the run to, the running, you know, come at the end of May. But as of right now, Sean Murphy just kind of did it, man. And in every category, it looks great. What a fucking trade! Are you kidding me? How do the Braves do that? Smart team. How do they keep getting away with this? <laughs> Matt Olson, come on over. Sean Murphy, yeah, we'll take him too. Speaking of. First baseman, Goldie, MVP last year. Didn't win April, but won every month after that. Pete Alonzo has popped 10 homers so far mm. this season. Matt Olson, um, he's on this sheet. And who's the fourth? Rowdy Tellez. Way to go, Rowdy. Rowdy. Eight homers for yeah. Rowdy. I love that. Uh. Does anyone want to go first? Trev, kick to you. I think there's a winner, but it's very it's it's debatable. What what do you like? Yeah, this one's tough for me because if you look at you know war stats and and and, and F four Goldie is is leading the way here. Um, they have all played a significant chunk of the game, so there's no one that's kind of left out in that regard. Uh, Alonzo with the power numbers, leading with ten. Uh, although you have Rowdy and Matt Olson right behind him. I think that's, to me, where it hurts Goldie. Uh, he doesn't have the slug numbers right now, though I'm sure he'll pick it up. Um, he only has four homers on the year, so he's got less RBIs. He's got less runs. I love the one-to-one ratio on walks to strikeouts for him. He's got 17 and 17. Um, this is a tough one for me. You know, I'm leaning right now with Matt Olson mm. just because I feel oh. like, you know, he's p- played a really well-rounded uh, first base there and kind of produced in the numbers that I like my first baseman to produce in. Uh, but Goldie is such a stud too. It's difficult. I want to hear your argument, Jake. Matt, Matt Olson feels like uh, at Yankee stadium, they do the subway race and right at the end, the the train that's in last place sneaks by you. I, I don't think it's Olson for me. I, I think you got to pick between Alonzo and Goldschmidt IMO and Trev, you mentioned, I mean, Alonzo 10 homers compared to four. That's significant. Goldschmidt does have 10 doubles while Alonzo has two. So, you know, you're you're losing a couple bags there on those swings, but um, he's making up for it, and I don't know. I, I think the team is polluting us a little bit with St. Louis. Um, the strikeouts, they don't really matter, but it feels like they matter. And those three stolen bases. Like, Goldie's still, Goldie's still a dog, man. That he He's my vote. Um, Goldie's my vote. I was also between uh, Alonzo and Goldie, and I think it's really close, and I was just searching um, a ton. Alonzo's been awesome. He's in the four hole every single game, plays every game. The homers are there. Um, Two doubles on the season, but 25 RBIs so far, and that's pretty nice for him. The... uh, The F war is in uh, Goldie's favor, so as the weighted runs created plus. But what I really looked at was that um, Goldie has the better walk percentage, slightly, and this K percentage is way down. And Trev, you said this earlier in the episode, your on base percentage starts with four. I look at you a little different. And Goldie's got a 405 on base percentage. So I did have on my notes here that I choose Goldie. I'm taking Matt Olson. I know that it doesn't matter because you guys both did it. I, I, he, I mean, he just leads in all the categories, guys. I mean, he's tied with Pete for runs. He's tied with Pete in RBI. He's got the most walks. Uh, he's got the highest slugging percentage by point zero zero one uh, over Pete. Uh, he's got the best walk percentage. Uh, he leads in OPS. Like he's kind of just been doing it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with Olson. Although uh, I guess we'll give snaps to Goldie because you got your April pedal. Leading in every category, a little deceiving there, Trev. Well, not every category, but <laughs> most of the said. fucking categories, okay? He's leading in some hey, good also, ones. Also, the Rays didn't go undefeated, okay? We're just messing around here. ABD cut his mic. <laughs> the next one, let's breeze through. <laughs> Louis, Luis, Luis Arise wins the pedal for National League second baseman. Yeah, man. What, he's hit, we talked about <laughs> on base percentage being over 400. We got my attention. The motherfucker is hitting 438. And he's hitting 438. He's got a 4.9 K percentage, 500 on base. I mean, uh, 
Sorry to the other people playing this position in this league, but like we don't have time. Luis Arise wins it. You get the pedal. We're moving on. If Cubs fans don't hear you say Horner, they will attack you physically in the streets. And Tyro Strata might have been better than him as well. So, but Arise, what do you, what do you do? Yeah. Just the conversation four. next month. Yeah, Strata would be the one that needs to be mentioned. He's chasing four hundy batting average. It's crazy. Bryce's shot's hot though. So hot. And shortstop in the NL might be a conversation. Uh, the names this on our sheet conversation. here, Bogarts, Edmund, Perdomo, and Swanson. Jake, I'll, I'll let you uh, lead the way because you did say this was your your biggest debate. Um, yes, I, I think especially now that Brent Rooker was thrust into the forelight. Forelight? Not a word. Yeah, that's not a word. <laughs> by no. you guys. Um, if we're putting him on that scale, to not put Perdomo on the same scale... Um, the numbers are ridiculous. He's hitting 383, 617 slug, a 1.073 OPS. Um, uh, Xander Bogarts is his number one competition. Uh, thanks for playing Dansby and Tommy, but I, I think those other two are just in an extraordinary league. And I think with the way this voting has been going, well, I'll, He's out for me because I he doesn't hit because he platoons. Yeah. But that's again that becomes a coaching decision. So I'm I'm going Perdomo. Got to win those coaches over. Yeah, I'm not going Perdomo. Um, Trev, who are you going? I like a guy that comes into a team and kind of establishes himself in April. Sometimes that's hard to do, man. And uh, Xander Bogarts did that with the Padres. He's posted up every game. He's played 29 games. Um, I, I I like Perdomo, but I agree with James that I I want guys that are playing every day. And that is not his fault. And maybe he does get that leash later on in the season. Uh, but as we're talking here, April statistics, I mean, Xander's kind of been doing it all. He's got, he's hitting the 300, the average, which, you know, that's almost as, the same thing as a 400 on base percentage to me. If you have a three in front of your name and average sexy just is like Perdomo's 383. What, I know that. I know oh, that. Okay. I know that, I didn't know but knew. this guy's been posted up every single day doing it. So I'm going to give it to Xander Bogarts, uh, 914 OPS. I know, oh, what's Perdomo's? One daughter. I mm. get it. Mm. You gave him a vote, man, but I'm taking Xander. Also at Xander. Uh, open the, the season as hot as you can, those first seven or eight games, the, the, their video game numbers, which allowed him to slide in certain slash lines later in the month. Like I think his, his batting average on that last uh, uh, road trip jumped down, but the slugging and the on base didn't slump at all, which I love. So, you know, the batting average dropped down to 220 in his last nine games of the month, but the on base percentage stayed at 368 and the, the slugging 452, um, which doesn't, and, and the, and the batting average, because he had such a hot start, 308. So, yeah, I, I had Xander as my pick as well. You want to talk about perseverance again, Trev? Because go look at Perdomo's last year and go look what he's done this year. Pretty, pretty fucking awesome. Yeah, I'm excited. I think that if they let him start hitting both sides and be a, a, a starter, then I think he's on his way to some pedals in the future. But got to play every game. 47 at bat difference um, between... Perdomo and Xander Bogarts. Look at Rooker. Third baseman. Got to be honest, I haven't really looked at these guys at all. That's where my notes stop. Brian Anderson, J.D. Davis, Max Muncy, Patrick Wisdom. Oh, no, I did kind of look at this. Muncy interested me. Uh, Trev, I'll let you start us off. Muncy made the adjustment. He went back to the uh, back step. And mm. started raking again. He started out really slow, then he just got absolutely hot. I believe does he lead the league in homers right now with eleven, or is that Rooker? Does Rooker have more? I don't know. Uh, I think Wisdom uh, might have even tied him last night, but that was a May game. Yeah, we're talking April May, here. Yes. All these statistics are through April. I think that's we should be talking about that. Uh, I watched Muncie hit yesterday, and he actually is doing like a double step. He takes a, his front foot forward first, then his back foot backwards, and then he gets ready to hit. I don't know why I'm mentioning that. Just really mm. caught my eye. These are names that like you say, give me NL third baseman. These are not the names that you would uh, initially just jump out to you and like, oh, those that's an NL third baseman. Like, where's Austin Riley? What's going on with that? Arenado. 
Arenado, exactly. Um, but these are the four guys we have in front of us, and these are the stats that they have. And with these guys, if we're just looking across the board, I mean, Muncie's kind of doing it. I think Muncie's going to get my vote. He's got a 408 on base percentage. He's leading in all the you know war statistics. He's one dot in it for the OPS. Uh, he has, uh, through April, he had the most home runs, uh, the most RBIs, um, the most walks. So I'm giving it to Muncie. James? I don't know. I, I think I lean Muncie. This one has really kind of twisted me up a bunch, like his average being only uh, 238 isn't super enticing, but then the on-base percentage is 408, and the slugging is insane, um, which helps that average be low. Has uh, he played most of his games? Is he like third base this year? I can double check. But... Muncie? Yeah. Are they still moving him around or without the shift? No, he he's playing mostly. He's at third. Uh, twenty as of today. Uh, Twenty seven games at third, only three at first. No starts, so he's been there. So he's the baseman. starting third baseman. All right, so that's a yeah. position I like slugging at a lot. So I, I'll go Muncie or or maybe Jake. I will allow you if you're not on Muncie to to make points for another guy, and I'll take him into consideration because this one it really. I don't know. I don't feel confident in any pick. It's Muncie. I mean, batting right, average bat, batting average is ruled out when you have more than double the walks as anyone listed. Like, and that's who Max Muncie is. Like, it's not a fluky thing. Like, he's he is one of. If you started listing players who I don't know control the zone or you know it, Max Muncie would be at the top of the list, and he was leading the league in home runs for a little bit. So he he kudos, led he led in April. I just checked officially. I mean, kudos to Wisdom who who made it a competition and you know kind of has that thick hot Trevor third baseman look going on. But uh, it's going to be uh, my thick king, Max Muncie. Max Muncie. Da do 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 do. Bah, 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 bah. Shout out Patrick Wisdom for like staying in the conversation, man. Yes. Yeah. Like we thought, hey, you had you had a good like year for the Cubs that one time, and he's just continued to do it. Love that, man. So we get to the outfield in the oh, NL, boy. and there are four eligible candidates for the center field position: Cody Bellinger, Brandon Marsh, Brandon Nimmo, two Brandons, and James Jeez. Outman. Um. Is there a runaway for you, Jake? It there's not a runaway. Uh, this was this was probably the toughest pick on the sheet because, like we talked about, also you know center field can get tricky, and I may have two center fielders in my three outfielders. Um, man, I the guy that I ended up picking. Um, he led the NL in slugging for most of the month. He plays a very good defensive center field. Um, it's one of those things that, hey, maybe it's April, maybe it's not. Brandon Marsh won dotted. Um, the other guys didn't. And, I mean, Jim, you like, you know, triples, doubles, homers. He's got all of that. He's done everything. Leads the league in triples. Um, that... Hey, man, uh, a couple of these other guys have a couple steals, a couple more steals. I, I don't know, man. These guys are so close that end of the day, like I thought Marsh has the best hitting numbers. So I, I'm going Brandon Marsh as my NL center fielder. Uh, this is the first time where my rules kind of hurt me because they don't play him <laughs> versus lefties a lot, but it's not automatic like the other guys are you sit when a lefty pitches marsh uh versus lefties i think he's 50 percent. so sometimes they slide pache in but he also has started like they yeah he's got more games than nimmo and bellinger yeah um and they've started him i think you know they faced one two three four five six seven eight lefties i think it's like four and four he hasn't um so I had to really think about how hard and fast is my rule because I, before looking at it, Marsh is my, is my. James, he did pick. start last night against Urias. I was in attendance, which is game. good managing. Just start your best hitters. Yes. Don't hide a guy. Yes. Nimmo Outman, man, this this crop, dude. I'm gonna get my vote because um, 
I like when this happens. Oh, you know and why they started him, Trev? Because he's fucking got one dot versus lefties and a one dot versus righties. So maybe at the beginning of the season, they just were being dumb. I sat in the reporter's scrum when they were talking to Topper yesterday, and he so, kept just oh, looking man. at me like, what are you doing? Why were you there? And I was just standing there. I wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to see what questions they were going to ask. God. And my gosh, I would hate to be a manager. I did that twice. Have... When Jake and I did it once, and then when we were in spring training, I stood in on Hyde's scrum, and I was like, Pfft. Dude, if you, I mean, the manager has to sit there and, and answer these questions, and he's like, what are you talking about? Anyways, um... I love when you have a, a, a young guy who has a big spring training and most of the time you write that off. Uh, but James Outman has brought it into mm. April. He's a young dude on a team where some other young guys were supposed to shine. I'm talking Gavin Lux. I'm talking um, Vargas at second base there. Uh, Outman's been the best of them all. And he's really kept the Dodgers afloat. He's been one of the best hitters in, in all of baseball. Um, and the numbers are close between him, Nima, Marsh, and even Bellinger. Uh, but I'm going to give my April pedal for center field to James Outman. Across the board, I saw him make a really nice catch last night. Um, he's a thick boy. Mm. If you saw him, nice dumper on him. Um, I just like that he's that he had the big spring and has carried it over. A lot of times, man, that'll just get in your head and just won't happen. Um, he's been doing it, man. Seven homers on the year. Uh, I think he leads in, uh, as far as those center field guys. He has the most RBI. Fuck. Um, it's close, but I'm gonna give it to Outman. Yeah, I'm, I, I apologize for everyone tuning in. It, you're going to be upset with us because a lot of guys on this sheet right here deserve a pedal. Yes, and we can only give it to so many. I think one. I think one player is going to get screwed. Screwed. So you went with Marsh. Oh, man, I got I had a lot of people. I, like I went with Outman, James. Center field is your oyster. I already went with Marsh. Oh, congrats, Brandon Marsh, center field. Um, I, I like Outman's numbers, uh, but Marsh for me, like Jake said, the the four eighteen on base, um. One dot versus lefties and righties. <clears throat> He's doing well. Fuck. But the rest of these two guys, picking the next two. I think I think there's one guy that's kind of, you know, separate himself from the pack. I think we all can agree. I mean, you look at the stolen bases and he's got he's got the you know the OPS up as well. Uh he I think he leads in F war. Uh, with all the guys that we have listed, I think we could give Ronald Acuna Jr. Yeah. one of the spots. Right? Uh, absolutely. Sweet. Uh, but then <laughs> it gets yes, fucking tough. But then. Tough. Let's, enjoy, more, enjoy, more, let's enjoy Ronnie for 10 seconds because I, I know Acuna, we're all struggling stuff, right now. Yeah. But he's, uh, 440 on base percentage, hitting 350. This guy <laughs> has come back. And a lot of people who picked him to be like the NL MVP, comeback player of the year, like they're looking very smart right now. 13 swipes. Get out of here. 13 Ronald. swipes, man. Get out of here. Um, and now this is devastating because is Ronald Acuna guaranteed 30 30 guy this year? And he's only got four homers through April, but like you got to expect those are going to come. He's going to get enough at bats if he stays healthy. If he's healthy with the stolen base rules, like you can almost pencil in 50. So then it's just how many homers does he hit? Yeah. Um, 16 walks to 18 strikeouts. Mike. Goodness, Ronnie, have a freaking month, man. So, some guys that I think deserve some love. Uh, R. Ian Happ has a really nice month, I, I think, compared to a couple of these other guys. I think he's going to be just just short. If you guys want to make your Sawinski and Reynolds arguments, I'll hear them. Uh, Yaz had a great month. I'm kind of going back. Sawinski's got an argument. Sawinski has an argument. I'm going back to the center fielders, I think, for my third outfield spot. I'm leaning that way as well, so it sounds like we're thinking the same thing. Um, Curious. I think I know where you guys are leaning, but then I'm going to have some questions for you. Yeah, because there's... Nimmo more walks than strikeouts. Yeah. Hot. Um, yeah. Just say it. So no, I, I'm, 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 I'm debating it. Nimmo and Sawinski for me are um, 
Because mm. I had already said, corner outfield spot, I, I want the slugging to be high. I want you to mash homers. But Nimmo's stats are for center field, right? So if anything, I think in my brain, it would have been easier for me to put Nimmo as a center fielder and Marsh as a corner outfielder because I think Nimmo deserves a pedal. But, but Sowinski's slugging numbers. The games aren't there. I don't know about the splits with him. Swinski's a freak. Go check out his baseball savant when you have a second. Me and uh, me and me and foolish Bailey on Wake and Jake today did. Uh, Swinski opened my eyes, but he he doesn't crack it for me. Trev, you're looking antsy. I also like Corbin Carroll, so I don't know. Can you guys reconsider Outman for one of these? Uh, the last pedal. I have oh, out- dude. Fielder. I have Outman above Nimmo. I sorry. I because you voted Outman for center field. I've I haven't. Put him back into the brain, my brain as in running. Um, I'll drop some fuel on the fire because we're we're hitting a tense part. Part I got a little Minnesota there. My final vote goes to Cody Bellinger. I knew you were going Cody Bellinger. I thought James was leaning that way as well. No, why are you so mad about that? You just can't convince me that he had um, you know a better April than James Outman. I mean, I, I, we could talk like they're close and they're they're fairly similar but i think that uh and i love like the bounce back aspect of cody bellinger new team i I talked about that with xander i think that that's awesome and he's found something that's worked for him he's made an adjustment love that um but i I just think outman has across the board kind of outperformed him even if it's just by a little bit i don't know i know you don't know i think i think think cody might have outperformed him just by a little bit um, I'm taking Outman again. That's my vote. So uh, for the third outfield, I'm going to give him my vote again. I think that's well within the rules, BBD. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. If it was between those two, which maybe that makes our lives easier if I choose between those two, uh, I would also choose Outman. Um, but they're close. <laughs> they're fucking close, man. I wish I could massage just to get more people on. The fucking thing. Because mm. I think what Nimmo's doing for the Mets is pretty huge. Especially, like, from the center field position. But from a corner outfield position, which is how my brain was working. But, I mean, he's got 330 average and a 430 on base. The slugging hurts him. But you tell me you have an everyday center fielder. That's going to do that for you and play good defense and center. I'm for it. Um, I don't know. Fuck. I'll, I'll go. I'll go Outman to make it easy on us. I feel bad for Nimmo and Sawinski, who's slugging like crazy. And Cobell, man. Yeah. There's a lot of guys that deserved it, but we, we can only take three. So our outfielders were Marsh. Acuna and Outman. Just like and those are it. not names that you would have said before the year. Obviously, Ronnie well, maybe. I did. I had those three as my Yeah, you did. <laughs> Just, you yeah. locked Called it in, it. didn't you? Yeah. All right. Nice, all right. Man. All right. Uh, so that was tough. Sawinski, that hurt a little Sawinski bit. stinks against lefties, so that's easy for me. He's got a 449 OPS versus lefties. So Eat a bug. That eliminates that. But what Nimmo's doing at center field spot is... Shout that. out Ian Hat because he also got paid. Corbin Carroll, 10 steals. And yeah, That's disgusting. Yeah. Man. Hey, each person had like a category where I was like, ooh, that would win for me. Ooh, that would win for me. And and NL, like the DHs aren't just more outfielders. Oh, the so NL that, DHs stink. Yeah. Compared to the rest of the, all the categories, I think it's the weakest crop of four. And I, I do think for our audience, and I think most of you are baseball fans. Nice, Jake. Um, <laughs> know that being a DH, there's a reason that we're not sliding another outfielder in there. Being a DH is hard. Having four at-bats a game and that's all you do on the field, Yeah, that's a skill set. So as much as we'd love to slide another one of those outfielders in there, the DH candidates are Gorman, Martinez, McCutcheon, and Schwarbo. Um, and I'll be honest, Trev, I let something influence me here. I let Pirate Fever influence me. Oh. I think I think McCutcheon 
pure stats wise would maybe be my two. But what he has provided to the Pittsburgh Pirates day in, day out, um, along with the stat line, like it's, it's very good. I've gone Andrew McCutcheon. Yeah, this is another one where like, I agree with you, Jake. Like if you're DH, you're, you're the, you're the DH. That's a skill set. You, you have to play that position. Um, Schwarber is, is in the outfield a ton. I think it might be 50-50. Obviously, he's at 40%. I think he's about to lose a lot of DH eligibility next month. Or yeah, the month after. Um, Kutch has has started in the field three times. Like he he is the DH for his club. Um, which if you have a guy that can do that, it's great because a lot of guys can't. Uh, is anyone else JD? Is he? Do I need to compare his numbers? JD's been solid. I honest, I had Nolan Gorman as the the best kind of. Stats, stats. Him, him and Kutcher are really close as far as just like general statistics. Uh, you know, whether it's WAR, whether it's OPS, uh, I mean, they're very similar. Uh, the slugging goes to Nolan a little bit. He's got more homers. Oh yeah, and yeah. Let me let me dive in Nolan Gorman stuff. He's been playing some two B, which again shouldn't fully penalize him, but but he does do DH. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Yeah, I mean, he's I mostly think I'm DH. More, more DH than any other spot. I think I'm leaning McCutcheon here, uh, and for no particular reason. I mean, it's between him and Gorman. They're so freaking close right now. Like, I'm looking stolen bases. Kutch has four. Uh, and for an old guy, and sorry, Kutch, I love that. Uh, you still got the legs under you. I could be persuaded because Gorman leads by a wide margin in RBIs. Um, he has more homers than Kutch by one. Same amount of doubles. Oh, this is tough. I don't like when they're tough. I'm going to go... Because then, then I vote with my heart. I'm going to go to an old trick where I go to the game locks and I see which player had more nothing games. Mm-hmm. Over. No hits. No walks, like no sa- that, no hurts, no yeah. sack hits, no sack flies, um, no hit by pitches. Just the mm-hmm. most games where you didn't contribute, especially at DH with that the affects, bat. Yeah. Uh, I'm on Gorman's right now, and he's got one, two, three, four. He's got four of those games. Out of his 26. So Kutch, let's go to his. We're at his game log. We're sorting by hits. Uh, oh, boy. One, two, three, four. Three. You have a sack fly in this one. Kutch wins. Wow. Only three games where he went to the clubhouse and said, I didn't do shit today. Unfortunately, Wait, you voted for Kutch. Yeah, uh, Jake. Yes. Yeah, Gorman had give him a clean. Give him a clean sweep. Yeah, Gorman oh. had four games. Kutch had three. And how about those pirates, baby? Oh, Go boy. check out our merch shop. Fire Kutch shirt in it. I just ordered it. Nice shirt. Sure. Mookie bets for you too. You guys are disgusting, dude. The guy. The guy's been fucking starting at shortstop. Trev. Although Miggy Rowe was there last night. You Got till. Mookie Pets. That's what one of my friends named their dog. <laughs> Tyro Estrada. My oh, my king, gosh. Has entered the chat. Connor Joe, everyone's favorite. And Jeff oh, McNeil yeah. for the you till spot. Um, I'd like you till spot if it was if you're eligible for a position you're not eligible for you too. Like, I don't think Tyro should be able to lose out the position. He's plays 60% of the time and then be available for you till. Like I, there's guys that are so you till they don't even, they cannot be placed in the positions and that's who we're looking out for. But if you can be placed in the position voting, win your position. So I mean, that's not how we've done it for two years. Tyro's got, that's 10, why I always, abstain. he's got 10 starts at shortstop. And 19 yeah. at second base. That's crazy. While also playing left field. Like, that that shouldn't be ignored. Eh. Mookie should not stuff. be a utility Because we just held it against the DHs if you weren't DHing the whole time. Like, yeah. I, 
it's it's how you till works. I love Mookie and I love that he played shortstop and actually looked pretty good, but I just don't consider him that. I don't think he'll be that going forward. Um, That was kind of like a, uh, out of some desperation or necessity for the Dodgers and the roster. Tyro Estrada, is he going to get a freaking pedal? Yeah, I think he kind of has to. The guys that we have listed in front of us, Mookie, Tyro, Connor, and Jeff. Tyro is run away. (laughs) That's pretty funny (laughs) to say that, Jay. First names. (laughs) <laughs> he's kind of run away with it in in most of the categories. So let's go. Uh, let's go, Tyro for me. Tyro, he uh, he deserves it. It's why the util was created. He had an insane month: three forty six, three ninety three, and nine two two OPS. And he's playing a little defense. Um, Shout out Connor Joe though. He's yeah. not too far behind in any of these. Connor Joe's got the. Geez, do we have to make a freaking? Reconsideration here, and I'm looking at this. Son of a gun. James, are you abstaining again? Yes. What if I what if I choose Connor Joe and he takes Tyro Estrada? Who are we going to? Bieber? I think if it was guys who aren't eligible for positions, I'd be more in. But the fact that it's like just like a let's help Tyro out because he didn't win second base. Like I, yeah, I want to not help eligible him out. for second base, then. Problem solved. Well, he was though. But it, he cannot be. Well I, well, I think we'd have to change the percentage then, which would change all of it. All right, I'm doing it. It's Tyro. Because eight Connor Joe's bases. fucking got me. Eight Damn, stolen bases Connor got Joe me. vote? Tyro has more games at two different positions than Connor Joe. Congratulations, Tyro. Eight stolen bases? Eight swipes? He's doing everything, man. Everything. Tyro. The bullet. Pitching. Mm. This is it. This is it. This is going to round out the all JM team for April. Damn. All right. This, so this is, a, this is a doozy. This is a doozy. This is a doozy. <laughs> doozy. Always is. Justin Steele, Spencer Strider, Clayton Kershaw, and Zach Gallen. Good for oh Justin Steele being with this group. I'll just read off like winners of categories for people at home just so they can get a sense of it. Um, Strider only started five games. The other three started six. I mean, that's schedule, uh, happenstance. Uh, Strider and Steele haven't had a loss on their record yet, but Kershaw leads in wins. Uh, Steele leads in ERA. Kershaw leads in innings pitched. Wow, three ways. make some people mad. Strider leads in oh, counting stats. He's got one less start, so I'll move to the slashes. Um, K per nine is Strider. Walks per nine is Kershaw by a hair, basically tied with uh, Gallon. Shit. Opponent's batting average Fuck. is Kershaw. FIP is Strider. Whip is Kershaw. I don't know. I think I just landed on Kershaw myself. I don't. I can go look into opponents and stuff, but that's tough. What are you guys thinking? Disaster. I think I think Strider gets hurt because he doesn't have the extra start here in April, and that's tough because that's not of his doing. Um, I think Gallon and Kershaw are so close, in in pretty much every category. Uh, but Gallon's got more K's, which isn't everything, but it means a lot. Um, golly, I think I'm giving it to Gallon, man. I, I just have had so much. I feel like there's been so many times to praise Gallon, and we've just kind of gone to the other guy that I have to do Gallon now. He's he had the does he still have the scoreless inning streak going? I think it ended um, last night or two nights ago. It ended last night. So he had that long streak in April, 20 something innings, innings 28. Yeah. After going 44 last year, <laughs> which is just absolutely insane. And again, fit, man. If I'm choosing between Kershaw and Gallon, uh, Fip is way more in, in favor of Zach Gallon. So um, Gallon's I'm- getting my vote. I'm gonna. I'm Jake. I'll pass it to you because I'm doing my uh, opponent test. Right. See if I can get a better sense. Uh, you know, sniff test on all this because it is it is tough. And we and I gave it last time, so maybe people 
I think it's interesting. And if Strider had another start, I'd probably pick Spencer Strider. That's how y- fucked up yeah. this is right now. Yeah. I hear Those you. Those big old feet on you, Strider. Why do you have such big feet? Mm-hmm. Um, One less start. He's right there on strikeouts. I know, dude. <laughs> Yeah, man, I uh, I want to check one more thing. I'm looking at Clayton Kershaw's baseball reference. And there's mm, a lot nice of stuff one. on that page, huh? A lot of really good stuff on that page. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if this will pop a balloon or not. Uh, the streak's in my head. I'll, I'll go Gallon. I mean, that's um, you know. Don't it's, be so upset about it, bro. It's Celebrate historic. your gallon Dude, pick. He, him, Kershaw, Strider, Wade Miley on the sheet, not getting the vote. And we haven't talked about Justin Seal, who has uh, the lowest ERA of them. And we're, we're normally ERA uh, snobs. I mean, yes. So that's that's where it gets even more twisted. So I'll I was leaning, I'll be honest, I was leaning gallon. I think I think the the strikeouts fit the streak. Okay, my my uh, opponents faced, you said, helped sway you last time. Uh, just did Kershaw's. Every team that he's pitched against so far is currently top 15 in OPS+. Oh, Plus. God. Go snakes, uh, baby. Uh, I'm doing, I'm doing uh, gallons now. Let's see. We got Dodgers. One, two, three, four, five, six. They're eighth. Uh, I mean, I'm going to, if you want to. Two Padre starts. I'm not sure where they're listed right now. They are 16th. <gasps> Gasp. <laughs> I think. Yeah, yeah, 16th. You're going by OPS? OPS plus. Okay. Didn't you already put your vote in? Jake did. You're trying to sway him out of his vote. Well, this, Jake. he said this swayed him last time. Swayed me last okay, time. I'm, I'm locked in with Gallon. Locked in. And I'm trying to, you know, buy time as I fill this out. Uh, so, I mean, Gallon's got the 8th, 16th, 18th, 23rd, 16th, and 30th. So it's easier than Kershaw's, but it's not as crazy as the Cole and Sonny one where it was like you face the bottom 10, you face the top 10. Um. Fine, I I'll, I want to give it to Kershaw, I think, but I'll give it to Gallon uh, to support Jake Snakes, and also he has it. You guys both gave it to him. Uh, sounds like it's two on one anyway, unless Jake changed. I don't know though. Like he's the ERA. Like Kershaw's got him an ERA, and I'm pretty much like Steele's got Kershaw on ERA. Yeah, why aren't we talking about Steele? <laughs> I said I said that. They're all good. They're all good. I think his his K percentage is is to me again, it's not everything, but it means a lot. And his is down. It helps. Seven point seven point nine three Ks per nine. You know, and Gallon's got twelve and Strider's got fourteen, almost fifteen Ks per nine, which is a joke. Jeez. But results based, Steel's pretty good. Well, you guys both did Gallon, so I'll just throw Steel some love then. Good for him. Didn't expect to see him Fip, on this list. Fippy's way up. Fip, Fip uh, yeah. steals way up there. Yeah, so it's not look. It, the the projective stats don't think he's going to. He's not. He's not, he's not looking like he's going to project it beyond a, up for a pedal again. So based on the results, I'll wow. give him his pedal f- vote. I like for me. that. Two unearned runs from Steele. Might have to check the scorebooks on that. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, mm, favorable. Re- uh, right. Yeah. Right. That can. Uh, that can. Congrats, that gallon. Congrats to Zach Allen. An incredible April. All right, now hottest manager. Gabe Kapler again. Gabe Kapler. Good up. Ah, uh, Bochy with his big old head. That's cool. Ooh. Braves Ashland said that she thinks Gabe Kapler's not hot. Yeah, he's too effeminate for her. She likes, you know, a rugged Alabama man, and Gabe's not. He that. only eats meat. There's pictures of him wearing white linen on the beach modeling. That's not her, her That's type true. of guy. It's true. It's tough. So Everyone says like that, that, and you get next to the guy. And then yeah, like, oh. you get next to him. You're captivated, for sure. <laughs> Draw, he draws you in, man. Yeah. All right. That was the All JM episode. Sound off. Dalton, so- we're not picking Wade Miley, bro. Nice, nice April, though. Sorry we April. upset. Jake sucks.
Pitchers only care about fifth. NL outfield hurt, huh? That was tough. It was tough. He doing that. Bow. 